One of the most diverse yet sensitive ecosystems on planet Earth is the marvel that is the coral reef. In fact, coral reefs are some of the most productive ecosystems on Earth, creating a web of plant and animal species that interact to provide food and shelter for one another. What are corals? Uh, a lot of people think that corals are plants or rocks. In reality, corals are animals. They're very small animals called polyps that form colonies which combined produce these enormous geological formations called coral reefs. But actually the animal is no bigger than probably a lentil, a very small, um, small pea, and some of them are even smaller than that. But their combined mass can create ginormous reefs. The coral reefs um, evolved in tropical waters. And this is a very important fact that their evolution over millions of years happened in waters that were warm, clear and nutrient deficient. So they were in effect deserts. These areas of the globe had waters that were so clear, not much could live in them. Plants couldn't find the nutrients they needed to live. So corals evolved this special kind of relationship with a plant that lives within its tissue, inside its skin. And these small plants, called zooxanthellae, um, use sunlight to photosynthesize and make sugars which the polyp, the animal, eat. In return, the nutrients from the digestion, the nitrates, the phosphates, feed the microscopic plants in their tissue and help them grow. So there's a very, very tight symbiotic relationship between the polyp animal and the plant cells within that tissue. And the beauty of that relationship is that it enables corals to grow in areas where other plants or other animals needing nutrients couldn't survive. And they flourished. They flourished on an unbelievable scale. And it and created huge formations around the world within the tropics. With that huge expansion of coral reefs around the world came a multitude of other species that adapted to live within this amazing community. And one of the wonderful features of coral reefs is because of the intricate structures which they create. As these colonies of polyps grow, they produce different shapes. Some of them are branching corals, like the elkhorn and staghorn. Some of them are bolder or massive corals, which create much smoother, larger structures. But many of them have cracks or fissures or different structures, which enable other animals to live inside them. As corals expand, the reefs formed can take on one of three main types, fringing, barrier and atoll. Fringing reefs, the most common type, form as a band around an island. Barrier reefs form when land masses sink and fringing reefs become separated from the shoreline. A deep lagoon separates the barrier reef from the land. Barrier reefs are quite common in the Caribbean and two of the largest ones in the world can be found here. The world's second largest barrier reef is found in Belize while the third largest, the Andros Barrier Reef, is located in the Bahamas. The third type of coral reef is the atoll. Atolls form when small islands surrounded by reefs gradually sink below the water's surface. After the island sinks, the reef continues to grow and rises above sea level. Coral reefs like those in the Caribbean are the richest, most colorful habitats of the ocean. A fascinating underwater world exists as a result of the many diverse coral formations. Some resemble tiny organ pipes, branching trees, or large domes, like this massive brain coral. This beautiful color spectrum of the coral reef is caused by the living polyps, which give the coral formations their hues of orange, tan, yellow, green, and purple. Considered by scientists to be the rainforests of the ocean, coral reefs support many different and diverse life forms. More than 25% of all marine life make their home in coral reefs, including sponges and one-third of all fish species on Earth. These reefs have remarkable economic and ecological value. They protect the shoreline by softening the impact of large waves which can erode our islands and are very important in regulating carbon dioxide in the ocean water. 
They create a welcoming habitat for fish, marine organisms, and aquatic plant life that rely on each other for food. To humans, coral reefs supply food through fishing and add millions of dollars to the economy via tourism. Additionally, coral is being used as human bone substitutes since coral is similar to human bones. Yet, they are the most fragile and endangered ecosystems. Coral reefs of over 90 countries have been damaged, such as the Tobago's Boko Reef, which tragically is today a mere shadow of its former greatness. The effect of global warming is of severe concern, as reefs are sensitive to climate change. Resulting higher temperatures can cause coral bleaching, a process in which the microorganisms living within corals are lost, causing the corals to die. Land and marine-based human activity pose further threats to our reefs. Reef walking, something many of us have done, has caused significant damage to our coral reefs by killing coral polyps. Similarly, overfishing and other damaging fishing techniques such as blast fishing, dropping of boat anchors and pollution via oil leaks from boats have destroyed large sections of our reefs. Pollution, especially from effluent runoff, has also destroyed some of our reefs. Ammonium contained in these runoff lessens the calcification in corals. In other words, the corals cannot grow. Furthermore, the chemicals in these runoff, such as nitrates and inorganic fertilizers, provide a breeding ground for algae, which grow at the expense of the corals. Well, because reefs evolved in these crystal clear conditions in the tropics, and you have to think back, humans only reached the Caribbean about 11,000 years ago. So the vast majority of the evolution of coral reefs in the Caribbean was in an environment when the water was really unpolluted completely crystal clear. You have to imagine what it must have been like. The rainforest coming down to these beaches, crystal clear waters where corals gradually were evolving over the millennia in this pristine environment. Now with humans coming in, we see quite dramatic changes happening in the watersheds above the reefs, but also on the reefs themselves. And one of the fundamental changes that's happened is things like deforestation. So we're seeing more and more areas of exposed soil and mud, which washes into the sea, changes the clarity of the water, making it harder for the corals to photosynthesize, but also often smothering them with silt, which is extremely harmful to corals. So this is a major, major problem in the Caribbean that we're seeing, is an uh, increasing amount of siltation of coastal areas, of sedimentation, uh, which is really causing a lot of damage. Um, also increasingly diving is one of the most um, lucrative activities in the diving in the tourism industry and we see that diving having a huge potential in Tobago as being a major source of employment and um, income generation. So again maintaining healthy reef habitats is critical to the economy of these islands not just for the preservation of the biodiversity which these reefs encompass. Uh, which is really tremendous. The coral reef is truly a wonder of nature that continues to ignite and engage human imaginations. And while wonders may never cease, it is up to us to ensure that this particular natural wonder of the Caribbean is around for younger generations to behold.